Hi, this is Linda Abdo, and welcome to another edition of Gallery Street. Um, we have with us today a wonderful folk artist as our guest. Uh, welcome, Linda Mears. Hi. Hi. Um, why don't we start out um, by telling the audience a little bit about uh, yourself as a person. Mm -hmm. um, you were a nurse for 20 years, and yes. uh, you always had an artistic desire to be an artist, and uh, you had an interesting story about um, a kitty box and how you started <laughs> out as a starving artist. you want to tell us about oh, that? Oh, I had moved to a new town, and I hadn't established myself yet with a job, and I needed to make some money very quickly, so I just went and bought a kitty box of watercolor paints and ink pens, and paper and I did some drawings and I went around to people I knew in the neighborhood and they it went around word of mouth too and I started selling artwork. Uh, door to door? Do it was basically door to door and to friends and friends friends and the word got around and I was actually making enough to live on for a couple of weeks until I got my other job established. And you liked it better than nursing, so oh, eventually yes. you decided to take a stab at it and make it a career? Yes. Uh -huh. um, tell us about your art style. You're, you're considered a folk artist, which is an artist with no formal education, so you basically paint from your heart. Right. Um, scenes uh, that you see in everyday life. Yes, I paint from life from memory, from photographs, from whatever influences me or inspires me. Experiences. It can come from anywhere. Yeah, yeah experiences that you yes, have. Uh -huh. um, you have an interesting background, too, uh, your family background. Uh, you have some Pennsylvania Dutch, and tell us about yes, your, your uh -huh. aunts. and. Well, my grandparents were Pennsylvania Dutch Quaker. Mm -hmm. Um, my grandfather rebelling and riding a motorcycle out with my grandmother to California. Mm -hmm. And I have two great aunts who acted in the silent movies. I have a great uncle who wrote music and led a band for a while at the Cotton Club. Mm -hmm. That's really neat. Mm -hmm. um, folk art has a history of incorporating crafts like quilting and needlework yes, uh -huh. and I understand that you do a uh, home home crafts like that and that's part of the heritage of well as I was growing up the family um, we would do things like make dolls or bird houses and sewing and crafty things but my art currently is just oil on canvas mm -hmm. that's what I'm sticking to right now mm -hmm. um, I'd like to talk for a second about um, the balloon painting. This is an example of uh, seeing something in the countryside mm -hmm. that you that moved you or inspired you to paint it. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that yeah. particular painting? Well, I was on a drive with my family returning from the kids' grandparents at the desert, and just south of LA, we saw about 20 balloons floating around in the countryside. So when I got home, I was inspired and I painted a, a ballooning painting. Um, and there's one image on this uh, front balloon uh -huh. uh, of a wind. I mean, that's your yes. special the, the designs on the balloons are not what I saw. They're what I thought would be nice, you know, and I created some kind of mythological lady blowing the wind. You know, I, I just thought of that idea and I put that on there. So. Um, I wanted to bring up a point here about uh, folk art, too, because most people don't know the difference between what fine art is and what folk art is. Um, folk art has existed in every culture, past and present. Uh, the subject matter is often naive and provincial, and the artwork often becomes uh, like a historical document. So folk art has always been here and is accessible to every person who has a creative urge and uh, anyone who has an artistic mm -hmm. desire um, uh, can do any kind of artwork and it is considered folk art. So it's accessible to anybody yes. who wants to pick up a paintbrush. I believe everyone's an artist. Yeah. Has, yeah, some, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, let's look at the second painting. Um, it's the bird, the cockatoo, with the fruit bowl. Is this your first 
painting or your first still life? No, it's my first still life. I thought, well, every artist does a still life. I would do a still life. And it looked kind of plain with just the fruit, so I added a bird there. An exotic bird. Right. Yeah, it makes it unusual. And there's a yeah. pattern also in the background, which I understand that the Pennsylvania Dutch love color mm -hmm. and design, and very often the detail yes. in the background is painted uh, with as much um, carefulness as the foreground. Mm -hmm. and there's that a tapestry to, in the background of that. And that seems to be kind of a, an earmark for your style, too. The backgrounds are yes. just as important as the foregrounds, and you're put a lot of detail. A lot of details. Okay. I've had people um, supposedly, spo you're supposed to stand back 20 feet from a painting to look at it. Mm -hmm. And they'll start walking closer and closer and closer and finding more and more detail and amazed. Like one person mentioned, that little person even has eyeglasses on. <laughs> mm -hmm. How does she do that? You know, I've had comments like that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of your paintings center around carnivals and circuses mm -hmm. and rodeos, um, places where people have fun. Uh, you have a very positive... Uh, this is the type of subject I like to paint. Mm -hmm. A lot of activity and bright colors and happiness and people creating in life. Yeah. So these are the images that you want to mm -hmm. put on a canvas in order to share yes. with other people. Uh, That's really the type of emotion I want to convey. The yes. positive, yes. yeah, the positive side of things. Um, you've also been recognized, uh, to your credit, by the Jay Johnson uh, of American Folk Heritage Gallery yes. in New York. Yeah, that's on Madison Avenue. And did that happen right away when you just first started painting? Because that's an unusual achievement. No. No, a friend of mine was an artist there and suggested I send some work. And Jay Johnson liked it mm -hmm. and started selling it. Within months, I was one of his top sellers. Mm -hmm. But um, actually, Frank J. Millay had to take over for him when his gallery closed. He, he died a while ago. So he's also on Madison Avenue. Mm -hmm. And my work continues to sell there mm -hmm. at Frank J. Millay's gallery. And you had also done a, an interesting a uh, series of cats. I understand that they mm -hmm. had displayed there. I know you like painting animals a lot. Yes, you I like doing pet portraits. Yeah, pet, yeah. which is kind of interesting yeah. too. You've done a lot of um, pets of your your family in France. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a look at, you have one painting of a cow, uh, which is very typical of your style. Um, this is very Americana. Um, you want to? Yes. Well, this was inspired after a visit to my father's farm. He has the whole farm set up with the cows and the chickens and the bulls and sheep and whatever. And there's some barn swallows there and quail. So I just enjoy doing any kind of animals. Mm -hmm. um, you're also. Uh, have been included in the Naive Art Gallery, which is by yes. a Japanese publisher. Mm -hmm. This is also an amazing accomplishment. Um, you're one of 15 there artists, 15 is this artists. international or just American artists that are recognized? 15 in international. This? It focuses on American artists, though. There's eight or nine that are American in here. Mm -hmm. And one is Grandma Moses. Right, you're recognized with Grandma and Moses, which John is amazing. Cain and a few others of the most notable ones. So I was very privileged to be included in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quite an accomplishment. And you've also done work for Hallmark. And I have Christmas cards done by Hallmark. And you've had calendars as well. And I've had calendars. I have a new calendar coming out. It'll be available in June. It's a cat calendar by um, a time factory. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to get that. It's a 16-month calendar. What's the most popular of the paintings that you do? Um, do people like the cats the most or the landscapes? Or you I can't don't say have that one people, most popular subject. People, don't, yeah. people react to almost everything mm -hmm. that you paint because they're happy subjects? Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, that's neat. Okay. Um, you also have a philosophy of art which is interesting. You were talking about um, 
new styles were created by artists that have no formal education. Yes. Um, you felt that uh, formal artists, when they go to school, um, kind of come out like a, a cookie cutter, right. where they're just they're imitating their teachers and they're not really uh, creating a, a new trend. Yes, I believe if you want to be a fine artist, you can go to school to get the basics you know, of how to mix the colors, get or dimensions. But yeah. to get your own style, you need to just paint. Just paint, paint, paint until it comes out. Mm -hmm. So your advice for any young artist out there would be um, to paint what they feel, mm -hmm. to paint what they love, to just get out the, the paint brushes and experiment. Um, and don't try train, to look like somebody else. <laughs> just train their eye to yeah. kind of put on canvas what they see. Mm -hmm. um, but basically the, the best artists paint what they love. Right. You would say that. Okay. Paint from their life and their experiences. In their heart. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. You also mentioned to me that um, you were very inspired inspired by Maxfield Parrish. He's one of my favorite artists for his colors. So do you look at his colors. paintings and um, you're inspired by his subject matter? I know he has an unusual color style. Mm -hmm. um, you don't try to copy them, of course, no, but you no. use it as an inspiration. Yes. Uh -huh. And the one I was most closely inspired by was um, a painting. I guess we're not quite showing yet here. It's oh, the, the trees can, yeah. This is the landscape. The here picnic. we go. Yeah. Picnic by the lake. And you've also hidden some images, I think, in the trees. Well, if you look close enough, you'll see a rabbit, a fox, a couple squirrels. You know. It's, that's my trademark. I add these little details and a lot of different things going on. Okay, we're going to stop for a public service announcement real quick and we'll be right back. Okay, so we can talk. Families who lost their homes, it's a major disaster. What does the Red Cross do in a situation like this? We're here to help the families. We give them food and blankets and we provide shelter. I was with the families last night and thank goodness they didn't lose their lives. But in so many ways they did. When people think of the Red Cross, they think of hurricanes and blood drives. But there's so much more. The Red Cross is always involved in the community. It's neighbor helping neighbor. Who pays for all of this to happen? We help people, people help us. First to respond with care and relief. Count on the Red Cross to be there for your family. But we're not a government agency. We rely on you. Call the Red Cross because your help can't wait. This is my studio, my drawing board my space with everything handy that I need. I put my paints right here, books, all over the shelf, all kinds of references, every subject you can think of. And a box down here that's full of photo references I've collected over the years from magazines, photographs, all kinds of subjects, all categorized. So I paint from my picture references, from life, from memory, and basically a combination of all those things because I don't paint exactly what the photograph looks like. You know, I, I make my own style of what I'm doing here. So first I start off with my idea and it'll be either in my head or in a picture sitting right here or clipped on the side of my drawing board and I start off with this blank canvas and I make sure I know where the center is so everything's placed where I want it. And what I'm doing here is a part of this painting, this Black Panther section. He's going to be right here in the middle of this little painting here. So I do this sketch. So I have this Black Panther walking down this tree limb and all these plants similar to this painting. And I'll put this tropical bird up here. And I'll end up putting some kind of fruits and leaves all around. OK. 
Okay, so I have the sketch done. In any dark places of pencil, I erase off to make sure it doesn't bleed through. Take my gum eraser, and I just rub it all over, leaving it very light. So you can just barely see what I drew there. Okay. And then once I've done that, I'm ready to start painting. And what I do first is I'll outline things, the basic images, the ones that are the center of interest, I outline first. And I'll dip into liquid and a dark color. This varies. Sometimes it's dark brown or black or whatever the object is. And this normally takes a little longer than I'm doing here. And it should be more black, we getting brown. And the panther is black, but if you look at any kind of object in life, you don't see just one color. So I'll put different colors around. You'll see there's blue. See? Kind of like highlighted areas. Move this a little closer. Okay, I'll do more outlining as we go. And his face will start showing up here. I'm usually a little more careful around faces because I want those little individual eyes to show up. There's the basics of it there. And this tail. And I'll do the same thing with this, the branch and the other objects. But I won't really take the time to do a lot on that right now. Okay. And I just start filling it in more. There's this branch he's walking on. And also need some light in here, the highlights. And I start blending. And when I'm all finished blending, I'll go back and put more highlights and more outlining to bring them out more. blended it, I'll start getting other little details like his eyes or life or whatever I'm looking at, even some yellow. And this too, I'll, I'll blend more and outline more as I refine it. So 
this is the beginning of this plant over here. And on this tree, beginnings that will lead into something looking like this, right here. These plants will look more like here. In the background, I'll have similar to these ferns. And I'll put a tropical bird up here and some fruits. And then it will be a complete painting after I work on it somewhere. So but this is basically my like Hi, welcome back. And um, we're here with Linda Mears. That was her demo. Um, I would like to emphasize uh, some of the points that we made in our discussion. Okay. One was formal training can often suppress creativity and that your own individual style comes from your own inner senses and how important it is mm -hmm. to paint things that you love. Correct. Now, you also have musical talent. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And some poetry, I understand. Um, yes. So you have a new series of paintings you've been working on? Well, I have one gallery requesting a, a musician series. And one is called Sax Man. And it's just an, an individual man playing the sax. I think there's a shot of it. Somewhere. Yeah, can we bring that yeah. picture up? And this is the first... Sax Man. Yeah. This is the first in a new series I'm starting. And I'm trying to express the feeling of there music. The feeling of music. The there's a lot of motion, motion in it, too. Yeah, it's neat. And the activity on the, on the stage during the performance. Mm -hmm. And I'll be doing others like these. So this is the first, the uh -huh. very first of a series. And yes, I am also interested in music. I've played classical guitar and piano. Um, we didn't say anything about this last painting oh. before the mm -hmm. end. I was just curious what uh, the story was on this particular one as well. This is actually a near duplicate of a commission that was very popular at Jay Johnson's. I went ahead and did it since people liked it so much. And it's just a, a country scene um, turning is this into in autumn. California? No, this is in the um, probably Connecticut area. There's colonial houses there. So you paint basically all over America? Yes. Yes. Whatever you see. That I you have like. even scenes of the Amazon and yeah. jungles or whatever. You know, just whatever inspires me. I generally don't like to uh, read. Um, on camera, but uh, Linda has written some really oh. beautiful words which sum up her philosophy of art that I would like to share with you if I, if I could. Okay. Um, my understanding of art is that it is quality of communication with an exchange of emotions and a message occurring between myself and those viewing my work. Also, I see that there are many more forms of quality of communication occurring in life than those expressed in the arts. Each and every person, business, country, or project in life has its own quality of communication. Even the way a person dresses, walks, or talks expresses this. My goal is for my art to contribute to the improvement of our society's overall quality of communication which in turn would contribute to an improvement of the quality of our life. My ultimate goal is that my art would contribute to a new renaissance on earth where all artists and individuals are flourishing and prospering. And what a better time for a renaissance than at the beginning of a new millennium. And I think that is just uh, beautiful. And I can see the, the poet in that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I wish you the very, very best of luck in your career. I think you're an inspiration to artists out there who don't have formal education mm -hmm. to paint whatever is in their hearts. And uh, I hope you do really, really well. Um, if you have any ending comment that you might want to make before we're off the air here? Um, I think we said it all. Just you're glad to come yes. on TV. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, you're very yeah. welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And until next time, on Gallery Street, uh, tune in and see us again. This is Linda Abdo. Um, 
and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>